Okay, so we've talked about hand balances. Let's talk a little bit about inversions. So inversions most simply mean that your heart is above your head. So even forward fold would be considered an inversion. Downward facing dog would consider it an inversion. When we typically think of inversions though, we think of not only our heart above our heads, but typically our pelvis and our legs. So that's gonna look more like um, headstand, forearm stand, and handstand. When people say inversions, those are the three that they really mean. So more passive inversions um, would be plow, shoulder stand, um, yeah, plow, shoulder stand. You could do some other restorative ones as well. But in terms of the heating ones, because of course, that's what you see on Instagram. Um, the principles are going to be the same as hand balancing when it comes to using this entire section of your body to make up for this entire section of your body. So headstand, you can get up to in a couple of different ways. Teddy bear headstand is actually how I learned how to do headstand. Um, I do think that really is probably dangerous for head compression. And I think that learning uh, Shirshasana with the classical expression, with modifications along the way is safer for you to then learn teddy bear headstand, even though it might be easier for you to get up into teddy bear headstand. So again, um, the inversions are hand balances, primarily the heating ones. So that means midline, midline, midline. Squeeze your legs together, activate them, root down into your hands to root up through your feet and create active energy in your legs so that it's not dead weight. If it's dead weight, all of that is coming down into your head and into your shoulders and ugh, yucky, right, right? Um, you do that by squeezing deeply into the midline, really having stable, shoulder girdle area and having wonderful hand placement um, however <laughs> with um headstand shirshasana we're actually going to be balancing on our forearms so it's going to be a little bit different so uh let's just try all right let's just try first of all uh come up i'm just gonna prop a lot because my old achy body is aching Okay, so come onto your forearms. Rock them back and forth. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? Anywho, um, that's my bones against the ground. So think about this. You don't want to be upside down wobbling, right? This is your stability that can't be happening. So what you need to do is find your forearm bones and root those so deeply into the ground. Um, you can push out. For me, I prefer to pull in because again, that thematically matches all of the other adduction in the body, squeezing in with the legs, adduction. Um, it matches all of the adduction in the body and just seems to make more sense in my head. So if you don't feel more comfortable one way or the other, I recommend squeezing in. Okay, then also, as you practice, I recommend changing the interlace of your fingers as you would normally do during a flow practice. This just ensures that we're working both sides of the body. Um, okay, that all sounds really, really good. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like a bit from the side. <clears throat> we're going to be coming up into a modified dolphin pose um, to practice this version of getting up into shoulder stand. So, interlace your hands either way, doesn't matter, you're gonna keep switching them. Find your elbow bones, squeeze your biceps together, lengthen your collarbone as you plug your shoulder blades on your back. Now, look at my back. Look at how nice and straight that is. It looks lovely, really beautiful shoulder girdle. Nice job, Leah. Anywho. <laughs> Make sure you've got some warmed up hamstrings. But start back here if you need to. And then walk your feet in. Okay? So, hold on. Don't do that. Look at that. Don't do this. 
yucky. Push into your forearms, squeeze them together to lift up and out of your shoulder girdle and keep that strength. So as long as you're rocking back and forth here and having really strong uh, muscular engagement in your shoulder girdle, you can then place your head on the ground. Now, don't put your head on the ground, ouch. <laughs> yeah, do that. Collapse into your head, right? Place your head on the ground, but push out of your head. If you have a really, really long neck, you actually might need to put a towel under your forearms so that you don't put too much pressure on your head. However, from here, in this modified version, okay. actually, I'm feeling a little self-conscious. Okay, all right. In this modified version, if you have it, you can do all of the similar preparatory poses for handstand in headstand. So, pretend you're wearing six inch stilettos, up and down. This is stretching your hamstrings and strengthening your shoulder girdle. Another three-legged dolphin. Mm, I know dolphins don't have legs, but you know what I mean. Start to lift. Mm. If you're feeling really, really good, do the hop. Do the handstand hop. Both legs. Okay, come back down. Switch your interlace. Breathe. Align. Mm. Find your pose again. Stilettos three-legged dolphin, mm. and stand up. <laughs> Holy smokes, my shoulders are tired. Okay, so I am not going to kick up into headstand today. I am tired. So this is also an important lesson. Know your body, and sometimes strengthening and conditioning and not kicking up into the classic expression of the pose is great. And you should just stop here and feel super empowered and come back and get it the next day because really this is incremental progress when it comes to these more difficult um, poses like imbalances and inversions. Okay, so I think the last thing that I want to say about that excuse me, is as I mentioned, once you're able to have that stable shoulder girdle and put your head very lightly on the ground, do not compress your cervical spine. You can do some of those um, handstand preparatory movements with your legs to work to begin the ability to kick up, right? So in the spirit of <laughs> things that you can do for headstand that are like handstand, Warrior three is fabulous for practicing uh, midline engagement, for practicing or opening rather your hamstrings. You can do a lot of different versions of warrior three um, that can really help in terms of strengthening and opening those two areas so that when you are able to weight bear on your torso and that kind of thing, um, you've actually been building muscle along the way and it will be easier. So a couple of options for um, non-weight bearing or your three modifications. Okay, so obviously, here we go. Just gonna do it from a standing split so it's easier. So obviously when you're practicing uh, warrior three with the intention of kicking up into handstand the majority of the time you're going to be oops, scoop back keeping your hands in flexion right so right now i'm in that preparatory <coughs> hop pose right you can actually see it sort of sort of 
Hmm. Okay, so that's one option. Another option that I think is a lot easier is using that warrior three with a wall. So what that could look like is, well, I'll just do it here, right? So you place your hands at the wall and you're gonna, hello. Yeah, you can see my hands, right? And so you can simulate the root rebound sensation at the wall. I really like that particular one for simulation. Another one at the wall is the exact same thing. Warrior three, oops, don't break anything. Get your foot up against the wall. Oh my gosh. Okay. And find warrior three. Whew, my foot's not actually on the wall. There we go. And find warrior three in this way. So this is very difficult for me. And it's really, really going to strengthen your back, which is fabulous um, for all of these um, hand balance, shoulder girdle strengthening, yada, yada, yada. So if you're able to do the warrior three at the wall like that, right, step it up a notch, grab yourself a block. This is going to blow your mind how much harder it is. I'll do this side just to even me out. <clears throat> it's going to blow your mind how much harder it is to do this with a block. And the reason why is because it's a little bit of weight, right? And so it's just, it's just more difficult. So there are some non-weight bearing options for uh, practicing, um, frankly, some challenging asana, challenging poses to build strength, educate component parts, and when you're ready to bear weight again, you're gonna be all the more prepared to do so. So, yeah, yeah. Uh.